A well-built and well-maintained ship can last for decades. Traveling across stormy seas isn't easy, but the human race has almost mastered the art of shipbuilding after many centuries of experience. No matter how well-built a ship might be, though, it can never be completely immune to disaster. You're about to find that out, because in this video we are going to be talking about incredible incidents with ships and shipwrecks. The MV Rena incident is well known in New Zealand. It was the country's worst EVE marine environmental disaster. The ship, a Liberian-flagged container vessel, ran aground on the Astrolabe Reef in 2011 and leaked more than 200 tons of fuel into the sea. Human error was to blame for the grounding. The crew had been attempting to make adjustments to the agreed course to save time and failed to take into account sideways drift. On top of that, the manually adjusted plan was five degrees off course from where the vessel should have been headed. As a result, it ran directly over the reef at full speed and was badly damaged. Over the weeks that followed, the waves and the tide weakened the cracks that had been caused by the impact, eventually splitting the stranded ship into three pieces. More than 2,000 seabirds were killed by the resultant oil slick, and both the captain of the ship and his first mate faced criminal negligence charges. The ship had to be written off. The British ship SS Airfield is still afloat in Australia's Homebush Bay, but it will never again carry passengers or goods. These days, it has a different kind of life growing aboard it. Tons of trees and foliage. It's a testament to the sturdiness of the century-old ship that it's capable of supporting its unconventional cargo without breaking apart or sinking. The steam-powered coal transport ship, which was built and launched in 1911, has had a varied and exciting life. It was used to transport troops during the Second World War and then went back to carrying coal until the early 1970s. She was officially retired from service and sent to Homebush Bay to be broken up, but someone at the bay took a liking to the airfield. Instead of scrapping it, they planted a small forest on board instead and turned it into an unconventional tourist attraction. She may be a shipwreck, but she's a very pretty one. If you like creepy stories, you'll love the tale of the Octavius, a sailing ship that went missing in 1761. The trading vessel had been on a mission from London to China and had picked up goods from the Orient to take back to her homeland when she attempted to sail via the Northwest Passage. Back then, nobody had ever successfully sailed that route before, and the Octavius didn't manage to break the trend. She never made it back to London and was officially declared lost when no sign of her could be found after weeks of searching. It wasn't until 1775 that she was finally found by the Herald, a whaling ship. They spotted Octavius off the coast of Greenland and boarded her out of curiosity. There they found the whole crew still in their quarters, frozen to death. The captain was dead too, still in his chair with his logbook open and a pen in his hand. The terrified crew took the logbook and fled in terror, fearing that the ship may be cursed. When another boat went looking for it to determine whether it could be salvaged, it had disappeared. Nobody has ever seen the Octavius again since. It isn't just ships that can be shipwrecked. Oil rigs can meet with the same fate too. The Boss 400, which is off the coast of Sandy Bay in Cape Town, South Africa, is a testimony to that fact. The French crane barge was being towed in 1994 during a storm, but broke free of its tow rope and collided with rocks in the bay. A rescue was attempted, but the remote location made planning the operation difficult. After inspecting the crane, rescuers ultimately decided the Bose was too badly damaged to make the salvage worthwhile and raised doubts about whether getting it off the rocks was even possible. Because of that, it's been there ever since and is considered a hidden gem of a tourist attraction. Some hardy swimmers are even brave enough to climb up it and explore the decks, although it's dirty and dangerous. The safer way to look at it is from the safety of nearby boulders. With nobody coming to move it away, it might be a resident of the bay for decades to come. When the MS Estonia car ferry sank in 1994, it was considered to be one of the worst maritime disasters in European history. 
The enormous vessel went down to the bottom of the Baltic Sea during a storm, and it claimed the lives of 852 people on board in the process, leaving very few survivors. In all the years since, people have wondered how it happened. And the truth is, we still don't know for sure. The official version of events is that the ship's bow visor, which could be lifted up to extend the car ramp, had broken off in high winds and allowed the ship to flood. That doesn't seem to be supported by the facts, though. Two crew members who survived the incident state that water started coming in around the cargo bay doors and that loud banging had been heard on the vessel prior to the sinking. Neither of them recalls seeing the bow visor open. Also, for the ship to sink, water must have flowed from the car deck to the lower deck, which should have been impossible when the doors were sealed. Rumors persist that the Estonia was carrying top-secret explosive cargo, and this is the real reason it was lost. The Wreck of the Mars, a Swedish 16th century warship, is a physical warning about the dangers of explosive cargo. She was the pride of the Swedish military fleet when she was built in 1564, and was designated as the flagship of King Eric XIV's Armada. At 200 feet long, and with over 100 guns on board, it was built to strike fear into the hearts of enemy sailors. We're sure it achieved that task, but all that firepower turned out to be its undoing. There was simply too much gunpowder aboard the ship, and so it was always likely to become a liability in the event of a fire. It had plenty of firepower, but it would go up like a powder keg if it was hit. Unfortunately for the Mars and everyone aboard it, that hit came during the Battle of Oland, within 12 months of its launch. An innocuous shot from an enemy cannon sparked a small blaze, and the blaze detonated the gunpowder supply. The ship exploded and sank, never to be seen again until the wreck was discovered in 2011. You'll find the wreck of the Edward Bolin 1,000 feet inland from the Atlantic Ocean in Namibia, and she's been there for over 100 years. A century of rust and ruin hasn't done much for her appearance, but she was once a proud and pretty vessel. When she was launched from her native Germany in 1890, she was the first ever steam vessel to run between Germany and the west of Africa, and was a great source of national pride. A combination of bad weather and bad luck did for her in the end. She was laden heavy with diamond mining equipment in September 1909 and bound for Conception Bay. The cargo was heavier than the ship was used to carrying, and so she handled differently than she normally would. To compound that problem, an unseasonal fog descended on the area as she tried to complete her delivery, and visibility was poor. The confused crew ran her aground on a sandbank, and they were unable to free her again. Nobody was hurt and the cargo was eventually unloaded, but the Edward Bolin never moved again. The USS Cyclops, a First World War transport vessel, ought to have been too big to go missing. She was 540 feet long and over 60 feet wide. She was also well defended. The ship was armed with machine guns and therefore more than capable of defending herself. The fact that she simply vanished one day has puzzled experts for more than a century. And the fact that the disappearance happened within the notorious Bermuda Triangle hasn't done much to dispel the mystery. The Cyclops was bound for Baltimore from Brazil in March 1918, but it never arrived in the Chesapeake Bay. No wreckage has ever been found, and none of the 309 people on board were ever seen or heard from again. Other ships were in the area at the time of her disappearance, but none of them ever received a distress call. If some tragedy befell the ship, it happened very suddenly and gave the crew no time to respond. Could it have been torpedoed by a German submarine? Possibly, but that should have left evidence floating on the water. Maybe it really was aliens. You can still see the wreck of the Marsem Finn below the waters of the Antarctic, where it appears to give off a ghostly glow as it rests beneath the waves. The 80-foot-long Brazilian vessel had been involved in a scientific research mission when the very ice it had been sent to investigate turned against it and trapped it. A heavy storm at sea had forced the Marsem Finn to deviate from its intended course 
and embedded it in an ice sheet that it simply couldn't escape from. The captain had no choice but to send out the order to abandon the ship in April 2012, and without anyone at the helm to keep it from harm, it eventually sank beneath the waves. Everyone who was aboard was saved, but the treacherous conditions in this part of the sea make any salvage mission unthinkable. The Marsem Finn will continue to glow from below the water until time and tide break her apart. In the fall of 1968, a Spanish cargo ship by the name of MS Cabo Santa Maria on the island of Boa Vista in Cape Verde. That was a big problem for the Spanish government of the time. The vessel was carrying luxury goods and gifts that dictator General Franco intended to be given to his supporters in Brazil and Argentina, including sports cars and fine food. Nobody knows exactly how it managed to run aground, but when it did, it stuck fast. The islanders of São Vicente sent a tugboat to try to dislodge it, but it simply couldn't be done. That left only one option open. The cargo would have to be salvaged by hand and carried away by donkeys and mules. Given the quality of goods on board, that was back-breaking work. It wasn't until a year after the ship ran aground that all the cargo was cleared, by which time the Cabo Santa Maria was beginning to deteriorate badly. More than half a century later, there's barely more than the shell of the vessel left. The islanders will be sad to see it go. Their unplanned guest has become something of a symbol for their island. You may have to suspend your disbelief for the tale of the USS Eldridge, which sounds like the plot of a science fiction movie. Back in 1942, with the Second World War raging, the American Navy was going to extreme lengths to stem its losses. One of the ideas they were playing with was the idea of making ships invisible to enemy radar by cloaking them with electromagnetic fog. An idea that was fine in principle, but had never been attempted out in the field. The Eldridge was to be the test subject for this new high-tech defense system. If you believe eyewitnesses, what happened next was supernatural. The system was switched on and the ship simply vanished from its dock in Philadelphia. Several people swear that they saw it materialize out of thin air miles away in Virginia before disappearing again and returning to its original position but with the crew driven insane. Sadly, no video footage of this seemingly amazing event exists. It sounds too absurd to be true, but why would witnesses in two separate locations make up such a thing? If the mystery of the USS Eldridge appeals to you, then the story of the SS Orang Medan may appeal to you too. The vessel was allegedly a Dutch merchant ship, and we say allegedly because According to the Lloyd's shipping register, she never existed at all. As the story goes, the ship sent out an SOS message in June 1947, reporting the death of everyone on board other than the person sending the message. A short time later, another message was sent, which simply said, I die. A vessel called the Silver Star raced to the scene, where they found the Orang Medan floating and unharmed, with no physical signs of trouble but every crew member dead. As they attempted to access the cargo hold, it suddenly caught fire, and the rescue team retreated back to the safety of the Silver Star. From there, they watched in horror as the ship exploded and then sank. The crew of the Silver Star was unable to provide any explanation for what happened to the SS Orang Medan's crew. But then again, nobody's ever been able to present any evidence that the ship ever existed in the first place. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon!